Can we all rise, please? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God. indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Wendy, you do a roll call? Yes. Byron? Here. Here. Robinson? Here. Sanders? Here. Collette? Here. Schrader? Here. Sears? Here. Sullivan? Here. Toman? Here. Thank you. Uh, reminded to please silence your cell phones during the meeting, and this will be your first opportunity for public comment. All comments and questions will be addressed to the president. Board and staff members will not normally respond to questions or during the meeting unless recognized by the president for this purpose. Comments will be limited at the discretion of the president to five minutes or less. <coughs> Do we have any takers? Moving well. Moving pretty well on cement. Um, good evening. My name is Lynn Leopold Sharp. I live at 744 Dogwood Circle in New York. It's a real pleasure to see so many familiar faces sitting around the table. I'm here this evening for really three reasons. First is to extend my thanks and congratulations to the board and the administration for your very diligent review of the school safety grant process. Um, I've spoken to several of you. I know that you looked carefully at what that grant offered, what opportunities were available to the district, and based on the recommendation I see on tonight's agenda, um, I want to applaud you for keeping the money that will help our district immediately, returning the funds that were uh, encumbered in a way that you as a group decided were not to our best interest. And um, as someone who's been away from the table for a couple of years, um, I am overjoyed to see that you're still putting um, staff interaction with students and um, the resources um, that tie t directly to academic staff and support staff as a priority for the, for the students. And so I thank you for that. Um, secondly, I have one comment to make about your, your proposal to abolish class rank, and I talked to Dr. Ellis about this earlier. I think the one problem I have with the proposal as written is that you will still identify a valedictorian and a salutatorian, but those students will be selected or so identified at the end of the third marking period, which means that at commencement, they will receive a plaque or some other recognition with a rank that may not be theirs. I'm, from, I'm aware of at least two instances where the first and second um, rank in class switched at the fourth marking period. Yet those students stood up in front of thousands of people and the salutatorian was so identified when in fact that student was the valedictorian. And so I would urge you if the only class rank you're ever going to make public, so to speak, not that the other class ranks were really public, but the only class ranks you're ever going to calculate are first and second in the class. I would urge you to make certain that the students so identified at commencement in the program and on plaques are in fact the students who at the end of their academic career really do have those class ranks. And lastly, I was just scanning through the agenda and I was tickled, and those of you who served with me will remember a little over two years ago when we approved our most recent um, agreement with the association and switched our health insurance and left the Lincoln Benefit Trust, we knew money was coming back from the LBT. And I was overjoyed to see tonight that you're transferring more than a million dollars returned. And I see that that's the final payment, so I'm thinking it's been more than that much. But I was really pleased to see that decision be so successful and that come to fruition tonight. So congratulations to all of you and thank you as always for your service. We're happy to see you moving so well. Thank you. Any other? Okay. Uh, I'd like to. Yes. Good evening. My name is Nika Driscoll. I'm an attorney at the CGA Law Firm, and I'm here on behalf of my client, Jessica and Friends Community, who's on the agenda um, later this evening for an, a, a request that we made to have the taxes exonerated for the 2019-2020 tax year. Um, and to provide a little bit of background, Jessica and Friends Community acquired a property on Scarborough Drive in October of last year. Um, and they are an institution of purely public charity. We made an application for a tax exemption that was granted in June of 2019. But you may be aware that by the way the timing worked, 
if we hadn't applied for a tax exemption before August 1st of the of the year in which the property was acquired, you can't get on board to have your to uh, be granted tax exemption until the following tax year. So January 1, 2020 is the soonest opportunity that Jessica and Friends community could have this property be um, tax exempt. So we're asking the York Suburban School District to exonerate those taxes for the current tax year. If it should be so charitable to do that. Uh, to let you know a little bit about what Jessica and Friends community does, they serve adults with intellectual disabilities in the county. They have a number of residential programs, two of which are located here um, in, in the York Suburban School District. They actually have five total residential programs. They also do um, a lot of day services through a, a program called Pathway Services um, that provide a lot of rehabilitation and lifestyle services to the clients that they serve. And they do um, some respite care and some community development as well for um, the folks who are taking care of these um, adults with intellectual disabilities. They own about 14 properties in the county total. Um, they're, they're all tax exempt um, at this point because of their status as an institution of purely public charity. So I'm here to answer any questions that you have. I, again, it's on the agenda. Um, the request is on the agenda this evening. If I can answer any questions about the organization, I'd be happy to do that now or when it comes up for discussion later in the meeting. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome Ms. Tichuli to our midst again formally. Uh, she is join, joining our group, and I would like to recommend that she be appointed board secretary to complete the remainder of a two-year term, which expires May 31st of 2021, as part of her responsibilities as director of finance and operations. Mm -hmm. uh, questions or comments? <coughs> Wendy, can we have a roll call vote, please? Ryrick? Yes. Posnow? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Schrader? Yes. Sears? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Toman? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. So there's no turning back now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have before you the minutes of the reorganization meeting and the planning committee meeting of December 2nd, 2019. If there are no corrections, uh, they can be approved as submitted. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sears. I have my little note here. I, there wasn't a very extensive report from the finance folks later on. Um, our interest report for the past month, $126,725. So we get a nice chunk at the beginning of the year because obviously we're sitting on tax collections ahead of expenditures, so that's, that's always good news. And that's my report. The re well, I should say the rest of it's a consent agenda. And would anybody like the items that are listed below considered separately? If not, chair recommends approval of the below mentioned items. Second. Questions? Oh, this can be a unanimous roll call vote. This will be a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Uh, the board met prior to this meeting in executive session as permitted by Section 707 of the Sunshine Act for the purpose of discussing matters of personnel and legal. No official action was taken. Uh, before I go to B, over the past month we've had two meetings. Uh, we've had fireside chats with both the association and with the administrators. Uh, remember we decided to start meeting with the administrators to make sure that we established lines of communication as we did with the association. Uh, they were all they were productive meetings. Uh, I think the association expressed some concerns over the the speed of changes to things within within the district, and w the concern that we're making changes without taking time to evaluate the, 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 what those changes responded in. Jamie, would you would that seem accurate? Hey, and Lois-Ann, would you like to talk to the Farside chat? Uh, yes, um, there was, um, those of you who were <coughs> in attendance, uh, Mr. Sears, Mr. Robinson, feel free to pitch in if I um, leave something out. Two concerns expressed by the administrators uh, in the Act 93 group, um, one of which 
is being taken care of um, tonight um, as an agenda item. And um, the other was, um, I'll, I'll phrase it as um, recognizing um, the hours, the um, work that's put into their uh, research in recommending um, items for board action and wondering <coughs> if, in fact, um, we recognized and uh, considered those um, on a real basis. I, I guess I'll, I'll put it that way. It, sometimes I, I, my words feeling like perhaps um, we didn't recognize the uh, work put into to their research and proposals and sort of um, considered um, our own thoughts on it. Um, guys, I don't know if you want to phrase it differently, if I'm making any sense. Um. Go ahead. Uh, the sense I got from it was that um, the administration often puts in long hours and gets data as requested, and if the data is not confirmed to preconceived notions, it's discounted. And that causes some, some degree of frustration and or consternation. There you go. And we assured them we would share that information with the board and uh, um, try to do a better job going forward. Thank you. So the, la the last thing I have is uh, a recommendation for adoption of the PA Board Association's Principles for Governance and Leadership. We bring this forward. This is actually part of board policy, so it's not new. We bring this forward because we have new members that haven't seen it. Uh, the thing I would point out is that if you take the time to read this, it makes a clear distinction between the role of the board in terms of governance and the role of the administration in terms of running the district. As we move into this year and we begin building out and serving on committees, I would ask you to keep in mind that one group runs the district, the other group runs the administrator, and we, we oversee policy. Just kind of bear that in mind as we're deliberating on things. So we have a, a motion to... So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Questions or comments? This can be a unanimous roll call vote as well. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you. Dr. Williams. Thank you. Uh, tonight we have Mac Brillhart here from the Education Foundation to give a report. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mac Brillhart. I'm the current uh, chair of the Education Foundation, and more importantly, I'm a 98 graduate. So just a little bit on the uh, background of, of the Education Foundation. It's been in existence for about 11 years now, and uh, through this year, we have uh, granted uh, just about $375,000. Our Education Foundation is, is unique in that we only grant for academic purposes. There are other education foundations throughout the county that grant for athletic purposes, for instance. We don't, we don't grant anything that's not academic in nature. So over the last 11 years, we've granted 136 grants totaling just under $375,000, uh, which is largely done through um, a spring event each year. Anyone that's interested will be having a spring event at Wind Ridge this year on March 28th. We usually bring in about $40,000, $45,000 a year from that one night event. Uh, and we also uh, have a, 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 a capital campaign every year that we reach out to, to uh, folks within the district. We're also um, engaging, uh, as we grow our endowment, we're trying to lean towards getting more into planned giving and trying to get folks to realize that they can not only give to us while they're alive, but also through wills and things like that through endowment building. We have joined Give Local York uh, for the first time last year, and that's been a success in engaging with Give Local York. More importantly, though, I have two students here with me. And they are going to speak to the, uh, the uh, Impact Foundation, which if you're not aware of that, is again unique to York in that we have a student-run board here, uh, which engages in two major activities. One is the Impact Closets in all the different schools here, um, as well as a uh, food backpack program 
for uh, students that are in need. Ladies? Hi everyone, my name is Chrissy. I'm the Impact Foundation Treasurer, which means that along with Ms. Trimmer, I oversee each of the impact closets in all six of our schools. So over the past three years, we've learned a lot from utilizing the impact closets. Um, we've developed a very extensive inventory system, which I interact with the most. Our closets and inventory intake is managed by our Impact Foundation students, who are each assigned to a different building and our 12 adult volunteers. The addition of a social worker, Ms. King, this year has been an amazing connection for us because she's able to find the items our students need while helping us make our system better and more beneficial for the school district. <coughs> Each month we receive about 20 to 30 requests for items, but this doesn't include like the larger items such as mattresses and furniture, but the demand for those continues to grow. One of our annual projects is our school supply backpacks. This year we distributed 110 backpacks full of specific materials that each student needs based on their grade level. Throughout the school year, we replenish our school supplies in order to get ready for the following year. We also coordinate with the holiday food box distribution to provide additional services. Tonight, actually, the Impact Foundation members are distributing coats, hats, gloves, and boots with holiday food boxes. As our operation continues, we are learning to help one family at a time since everyone's needs are very individual. Um, that's all for me, and now I'll pass it on to Janelle, our Vice President. Thank you for your time. Good evening. Thank you for letting us update you on the work being done in Impact Foundation. Um, I'll start you off with a little background information. Four years ago at Lutheran Memorial, Impact Foundation students helped to build out a space where now we pack food for three schools in the district, Indian Rock, Valley View, and the high school. We have two other funding partners, St. John's Lutheran, and Eastminster Presbyterian who hope to distribute food to East York, Yorkshire, and the middle school. The food that is bought through the, for the backpacks is purchased through Central PA Food Bank and the York County Food Bank. We also re receive in-kind uh, food donations gathered through neighborhood food drives, one which was hold, held two weeks ago, and school-coordinated events such as the NHS trick-or-treat night collection <coughs> and other donations along these lines. Through this, um, even though we receive a lot of mass, uh, donations, through this, we still have to purchase food for the backpacks, and we estimate that it costs about $200 to feed one student a year, and we estimate $7,000 a year for three schools. Um, in the 17-18 school year, 799 packs were distributed at about $5 per pack. In the 18-19 school year, 1,411 packs were distributed, and the price per pack was reduced to $3, and as well, um, we expanded to the high school. This school year, we have distributed 592 packs to date. As the number of packs we have distributed continues to grow, we also continue to expand the Food for Thought program. New this year, Sprout of Hope has helped to provide fresh food for the packs through the summer and into the fall. Sprout of Hope has helped us to build a garden at Valley View, where all types of produce were harvested by numerous volunteers. This produce is given to families in, uh, in the community on Wednesdays at the middle school lunch program, as well as um, during Ms. King's home visits. Another new addition to the pro, uh, Food for Thought program is the Choice Pantry at Lutheran Memorial. Once a month, we open the Food for Thought room at the church and allow families to come and pick up larger quantities of food. This was started to reach some of the older kids in the district, along with their families, as the weekly packs only feed one child. As this pr program continues to expand, we continue with our goal of helping as many families as we can, one kid at a time. We appreciate you allowing us to speak with you tonight, and thank you for your continued support of this program. Thank you. Impact Foundation really is a nice, well-run student organization. They do a lot of good things for our kids. Um, you talk about uh, there's this side of this and the other side of this. Do you, does the Impact Foundation share any of their funds with the group that's helping on the east side of the district, for lack of a better, uh, helping East York, the middle school? Yeah, my, my understanding, I uh, wasn't prepared for that question, but then you can correct me, Ms. Treasurer. Uh, go ahead. Are, are you speaking specifically about the food backpacks? Yeah, the backpacks. The, each building has a different place where they're affiliated with. Um, on the east end of town, East York has a church, and um, 
Yorkshire has a church as well. Are you that. sharing any funds with them? You were talking about how much money you spend for back. No, those are all um, funded by those churches. By the churches are doing that. Mm -hmm. And and those, um, I think Mrs. Um, Dr. Ketterman could even speak up from her past experiences, I think, too. Um, those are um, all done through the, the, the school. Um, as far as like the school works with the, the churches themselves. Okay, okay. I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that there's yeah. some. There's, yeah. Parody. Um, we have parody, one, parody on the Tuesday. We have one um, <coughs> volunteer, um, Kathy Penzola, and she is our representative who's involved with the um, Education Foundation, and she is our central liaison for all six of the buildings, um, just as I am the liaison mm -hmm. for the impact closet. And so she makes sure that everything is, is run. Okay, just to make sure we've got parity. Like we have kids yes. all over. One other question, um, too. Uh, as I'm looking through on tonight's agenda, there are several um, uh, programs, modifications at the high school, and new programs that are going to be approved. And it says that there are going to be grants from the foundation. Are those grants renewable? Or are you allowed to re renew them? Or once the first year is over, do we then does it then become part of the high school budget or the district budget? What's the they're generally not renewable. So there's an application process <laughs> where we solicit grant requests from the whole district, mm -hmm. whether it be an administrator or a teacher, and they then submit applications for a grant proposal. Mm -hmm. And we have a grant proposal committee that reviews them, ranks them, and we fund dependent on the amounts a certain amount every year. Are they allowed, to, I guess my question is, once you have your initial grant, are you allowed to come back and apply again? You are. And again, and yep. again, so it doesn't wind up in somebody's budget, <coughs> so you are. Yes. Is, is any preference given to those renewals, so to speak? Well, I would say that if a, if a particular grant is working well and we can see success from it, I think we'd be more likely to continue to grant it. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't extend thanks again to the um, foundation and certainly to the students. Uh, it's a lot of um, a lot of work to do what you do, and it's uh, very much appreciated by the board that you spend your time and and resources to look after families who are in need. So we we thank you and and we appreciate your hard work from the community members to the students on up and down. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mac. Uh, in tonight's superintendent's report that you have in front of you, uh, I won't read it to you, but I'll highlight some of the things. Uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, well, the students are very busy with all kinds of things, especially this time of year, but yesterday afternoon, the uh, high school musicians um, put on a wonderful show, wonderful. Uh, what I especially liked about it was, uh, it, you know, it's, it's difficult enough to have an ensemble perform extremely well, but then to take two ensembles to work together to perform really well was really significant. So the, the stage band uh, <coughs> did a number with the chorus, and the stage band also did a number with the orchestra, and it was really well done. So kudos to them. Uh, kudos to Mr. Hustler, Ms. Steyer, and uh, Mrs. Thrush for their work with our students. Also tonight, uh, tonight you'll be asked to act on a class rank proposal. Um, I had uh, an interesting email over the weekend uh, from a parent who, let's just say, didn't have some very nice things to say to me uh, via email. So I called him and we had a conversation. And he now supports this proposal because he hadn't read the proposal. He only saw what was in the newspaper. So after reading the proposal, he's, him, he and his wife, uh, his wife said, I'm solid on this proposal now. So they gave it some thought and they reflected on it and they're very in support, very much in support of it. Uh, one suggestion that the, the husband had was that uh, perhaps we should have not used the word class rank elimination and instead uh, use some kind of language about replacement uh, of recognition. So while we're not doing <coughs> ranking in this proposal, we are extending recognition to, to really good students who work hard all, all their whole time in the high school um, and recognizing them in a, in a significant way. And maybe the best way I can, can explain that is that I talked to one parent today whose child uh, is a junior, uh, is currently ranked 12th, 13th, somewhere in there, and has a 4.0, higher than a 4.0. Under the current system, 
that student will not get any significant recognition at graduation time. Under the proposal, that student will get strong recognition at graduation time. So to me, that's very significant. Because sometimes we have as few as five kids with a 4.0 or higher. Sometimes we have 13 or 14 kids with a 4.0 or higher. So we create a system in this environment where we would be promoting <coughs> hard work and recognition of hard work. Because you can theoretically have a 4.0 or higher and not be in the top 10. It happens. It has happened. And it's going to happen with our junior class as well. So there's that, that parent's suggestion about reframing how we talk about this really hit home with me and it made a lot of sense and I wish I had thought about it before because that was significant. So the three recognitions we're still having as uh, Ms. Sharp said, Leopold Sharp said, um, still having valedictorian and salutatorian. Uh, but then we'll also have academic medals for those who score 4.0 or higher uh, in their GPA. So they're, they're competing against themselves to get higher and higher grade point averages. So we'll have that. And then we're also going to have a recognition for uh, those who earn a 3.8 or higher uh, as, far, as part of the Dovey Awards. And I think Mr. Sears suggested that we have some kind of evaluation instrument to, to, to evaluate the effectiveness of this change. And that is outlined in the proposal as well. And there are various criteria that the administration will view to uh, determine the impact that this kind of a change would have on students uh, getting into uh, their preferred school, college of choice. Uh, and that's all listed there. And we would do that over a five-year term at the very least because let's, let's, let's not lose sight of the fact that this change isn't going to happen unt uh, until the, the current eighth grade students are graduates. Uh, so the full impact of this change won't be known for at least five years. Um, so that's what I had to mention about that. There's a couple other things in the report. Uh, we have a couple of retirements uh, you'll be asked to act upon. Uh, at the bottom of page two, um, two middle school teachers, uh, grade six science teacher Pat Stanford and grade six social studies teacher Kathy Cardello have submitted their letters of retirement. And uh, at the end of the school year, I see Jamie making a sad face. Uh, because it's <laughs> so uh, you'll be asked to to act on that tonight. Uh, they'll be they will be missed. Uh, AP honor roll. Uh, we were notified recently that the high school again was named to the college AP's honor roll. Uh, one of two uh, schools in York County, and this recognition is for those who increase the the number of people. Uh, having access and doing well in the AP exam and uh, uh, with a score of three or higher. The other school may surprise you. It's York City. Hmm. Now remember what this criteria is. It's, it's, it's spreading the, the availability of AP exams and, and the success in those. So that's a good thing for the city of school, for the school district in New York City. Uh, this recognition is given to 250 schools in the United States and Canada that, quote, simultaneously achieve increases in access to advanced placement courses for a broader number of students and also maintained or improved the rate at which their AP students earn scores of three or higher on an AP exam. In our region, there were only other two, two other schools, one in Lancaster County, one in Dauphin County, uh, Derry Township in Dauphin County, and Conestoga Valley in Lancaster County. Other than that, it's us. So something to be very proud of, and congratulations to, to Dr. Ellis for creating an environment where that can happen. Uh, ACT scores, uh, we recently received some information about our students and how well they perform on ACT scores. You can see on page three, the table uh, shows historically how we've done with uh, ACT, uh, and the number of students who take it, and where we fare compared to state averages, which is significant. Uh, the graph at the bottom of page three shows you they have this metric uh, that they call uh, ready for college level coursework. And by their metrics, 88% of our students are ready in college English composition, for example, compared to 78% statewide. So the orange bar is York Suburban and the gray bar is statewide. And you can see that our students uh, fare significantly better than the statewide averages. There's a little bit more information on the ACT scores, too. And then um, 
Another final note of recognition, again, for the high school. Um, on November 8th, National STEM Day, Newsweek magazine ranked all schools, whether public or private, across the nation for the quality of science, technology, in other words, STEM, delivery. The magazine ranked York Suburban High School as the <coughs> 2,827th best school in the country in its listing of the top 5,000 STEM schools. That also is a significant recognition. And also at the end of this report is a student enrollment report. And that concludes my report. Questions? <coughs> Mr. Julie, business office. Okay. No, there's item C. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed yeah. that. Yes, we did. The administration recommends approval of the proposed 2021 <laughs> school calendar. So moved. Second. Discussion? Uh, so she said that I will not be supporting this uh, calendar the way it is proposed. Okay. Uh, having heard from uh, the teachers regarding the day after Thanksgiving, the Monday following Thanksgiving as a holiday, um, I would be prepared to support that revision with the elimination of the 23rd as a school working day. And I appreciate their coming forward and providing that input. Yeah, that's a, that was a recommendation out of uh, Academic Standards Committee and, and adopted into the calendar, the proposed calendar. Any other? Could we have an individual roll call phone? Now I'm confused. The, the, I, I move to accept it as proposed. Correct. Are we amending that? It's no. Not amending. No. No. Okay. Okay. Tommy? Yes. Scalat? Yes. Sullivan? No. Fyrick? No. Sears? Yes. Robinson? Yes. Sanders? Yes. Pozno? Yes. Trader. Yes. Now, now, now you're up. Business office report. Administrative <laughs> report. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> no, I'm getting sick. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> you're gonna kill me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's been a long day. I've been up since 4:30. <laughs> Dr. Ellis. Thanks so much. Uh, Ms. Guy was unable to be here tonight. She's a little nervous about the roads and being a new time, new driver as well. But I'm sure she would have spoken um, about the concert. It really was a wonderful concert. I'm so proud of the kids for the work that they've done and all the time they put into it. Uh, it's also been a great start to our sports seasons. Many of our teams are doing very, very well. So it looks like we'll have a lot of success as we did this most recent fall. Um, she may also be at home studying for her midterms. Her midterms are Thursday and Friday, so that's sort of consuming a lot of what the students are focused on this week. Um, and tomorrow evening, Link Crew, um, who came and visited, you have a program they called uh, Sprinkles and Studying, where they'll actually, I'm sorry, it's Cookies, Cocos, and Cram this time around. They have so many cool little names for it. Uh, but basically, they've got all kinds of holiday cookies there, and teachers are volunteering to come in um, and leading just uh, tutoring sessions for the students. So there's a table set up for math. The kids spend 30 minutes going over math. Then they rotate to the world language table, and they get a chance to drill some of the things for world language. Then they rotate over to a table that's doing a help with science, uh, the biology that they're working on, and then another table uh, that's with American culture. So teachers are there as well as our upperclassmen, link crew leaders, are there to help facilitate that the first time the students go through midterm. So it really is a neat event. Um, if you happen to be around the high school tomorrow evening, feel free to stop by and see it. Um, so that uh, would have been what the Skyers, I think, would report it. What I thought I'd share with you this evening, because it came up in a question around the class rank piece uh, most recently, was the idea of our school profile and how we uh, share with uh, colleges information about our high school. Uh, so this is a document that we generate every year. Um, and it's, it's taken a different couple of forms over its history, but this is one, um, as I do with most things, I, when we looked at the lives, I guess we went out and looked at all the schools in Pennsylvania and what seemed to be sort of typical and common because we want our college admissions officers to be able to look at this and glean information very quickly. So this is meant to be a very high level summary of what our school is. Um, we certainly try to emphasize the recognitions that we get because that should instantly give credibility to a college counselor. Um, we explain a little bit of our curriculum. In the bottom left hand corner, our honors and AP program, one of the things that colleges always want to know 
is are the students taking the most challenging courses possible? So we list for the college what are our most challenging courses. So for instance, in the ninth grade level, it's honors everything. By the time we get to 11th grade, we start mixing in AP language as well, um, so that they can go and they look at a student's transcript and say, okay, ninth grade, this student took three out of the five honors classes that were available or so forth, and they'll use that to make some decisions. Um, we also try to explain our grading system as well. So if you were to go on to other college or other high school websites, you would find a document very similar to this one. Everyone has something like this, uh, but it's an opportunity um, for us to tell and explain a little bit about our system. On the back top is sort of the way where we try to <coughs> really emphasize some of the really great success and how we um, perform relative to some other places. Our averages in terms of pursuit of higher education. Um, our national merit program, um, which has been very successful over the last number of years. So that helps them to realize the number of students that are the really top elite school students that we have. Um, participation rates for SAT, graduating size, AP information and SAT results on the right hand side. Um, certainly SAT, we have more students participating in the SAT and we had a fixed amount of space, that's why I didn't typically pull the ACT data that Dr. Williams talked about, um, but that's certainly something we'd like to include. And at the bottom, um, we include the students and where they're going, uh, where are they are attending college. So it's a great way to, to say, um, these are our students, these are the kind of schools that they're being accepted into and attending which means we're very pr are proud of them and that we certainly think that they our students would be competitive at your institution. So this document um, will go and typically accompany the letters of recommendation, the student application, um, as well as the student transcript when they go to colleges. And it's also available on our website for anyone to check out. Uh, it's the first document I go to when I'm scouting out what other schools are doing to see uh, what we might want to consider doing. It's one of the first places I go. Um, when I go like to the Mount Levin's website or Conestoga's website or, or Heritage or the other top schools in Pennsylvania to see the information that they're sharing about their students. So, this is your school profile. Uh, any questions? Or? Thank, you. Okay. Thank you, sir. And Dr. Gully. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. I just want to take a moment this evening to uh, share a new instructional approach for uh, implementing with India Bank as part of our goal, uh, not only for district, but of course for the elementary buildings, uh, is to improve our learning and uh, the achievement with our math scores. So uh, obviously we have our EDM, our everyday math program that we have as our core program. But we also come up with ideas to supplement in different interventions that we have. So back on November 11th, we had an in-service day and our math coach, Wendy Houck, uh, one of the fourth grade teachers, Eric Kaufman, went to a conference. Uh, it was with a gentleman by the name of Bill Atwood. And Bill is a teacher for 20 plus years. And our goal from this training was to how do we improve written responses in mathematics for kids. And there's four different components that went into this training. And when the <coughs> teachers came back and met with our, our faculty, uh, it was just going through some of these different practices. And it really caught on well, and it really resonated well to the point of complementing what we currently have in our program. One key part was vocabulary, one was problem solving, uh, what we call review activities, and then assessments. So what Mrs. Irwin is going to share with you is a strategy that we were using within the classroom of how to expand the um, vocabulary of our students, our elementary students. It's anticipated that when a student starts their kindergarten experience and gets to raise grades, they'll have 275 plus vocabulary terms in mathematics. And what we find is that 70% of what kids learn, if it's just auditorily, then they're, they're going to lose it. You know, if you don't use it, you lose it. Um, when you make it with an association, uh, with Bob Marzano talks about there's a 34% increase if you can associate that with a picture. And so this approach really tries to do that. The approach uses hand motions, different signals to learn vocabulary. And repetition is really the key. Uh, of our 14 regular classrooms that we currently have, now again, this is only a month. We're in the infancy stages with this. Uh, but six of the teachers have already jumped on board. What it takes is a lot of coordination for consistency with what these motions look like. But I think through this very small clip, you'll see what we're, we're working towards. And the idea is when these terms, these math vocabulary terms are being used, 
um, kids are being able to associate, and what we've found in such a short time is they're able to use the terms. It's rather, it's just not calculation. It's just not computation. It's just basically understanding why they're doing math. And what we've found through the assessments over the last couple of years with Common Core, kids need to be good readers to do mathematics. It's no longer just computation. I know you know that. So when you see this clip, you'll, you'll see what some of our students are doing. We're excited about it. It's a pilot. It's not something that's uniform through the building, but we are going to assess it each month. And one big part of it is the idea is we're taking our EDM vocabulary for each unit and then thinking how can we come up with these different motions for students to learn. And at the beginning of every class, three to five, seven minutes, we're going through these motions with the kids. Um, and then again, it's, it's just that repetition of what we do. So we're excited. We think it's going to, so far, it's had great benefits. I'm not saying it's one, the answer for everything that we do, but it's one more piece of the puzzle that we can use to help support our students with our learning of math and vocabulary. Mrs. Irvine, if you don't mind sharing. <coughs> Slide it over. They love being taped, by the way. They love the video. But the idea, it's you say it, you hear it, you act it, and then of course you picture it. And again, it's just through that repetition. So um, I, I think the beauty is, is the students, when they're given explanations, there's a lot of cooperation and collaboration that's taking place between them, being of course led by the teacher. But it's getting them to talk about it, and again, just that usage. And uh, we're hoping it yields great results and that long-term memory, and then of course the application whether it be through any type of assessment that they do and that it sticks. Hopefully we get to the middle school and then up through the high school to continue having those, those positive scores. <coughs> any thoughts, comments, questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Are you sure? Now, this time I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> One more time, Mr. Chu. You have before you the business office report, which includes items one through seven that were discussed at the December 2nd planning meeting. Would any board member like any of these items considered separately, or are there any questions on any of these items? If not, I would like I would like to ask for a motion be made to approve the below mentioned items. Second. Questions, comments? I think this can be a unanimous roll call vote. This can be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Item B, the administration rec recommends board approval amending the 2019-20 budget in the amount of 84856 <coughs> as follows for the school safety and security grants. Uh, debit and credits debits to the expenditures and revenue, uh, credit to the revenue account as shown below. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? Again, this can be a unanimous. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Item C, the administration recommends approval of returning $334,028 to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for the School Safety and Security Competitive Grant Piece for the SROSPO position as per board action on October 7th. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, discussion? I just reiterate that I wish we wouldn't do this. It's going to hurt us in terms of getting future grants from the state uh, and uh, probably falling on deaf ears, but I, I would like us to reconsider this. Yeah, but so a roll call vote on this. <clears throat> Robinson? No. Sanders? Yes. Schrader? No. Stillman? Yes. Gillette? Yes. Fryrick? Yes. Sears? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Holds now? No. <clears throat> Item D. The administration recommends board award the bid for the stair tread replacement for the high school to Lauer Construction Services for a total bid amount of 126000 Second. Questions or comments? Okay, this can be a unanimous roll call vote. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none. Motion passes. <coughs> Item E, the administration recommends board approval for Glenn A. Fieser to be exempt from paying real estate taxes for property located at 109 South Mannheim Street, York, PA, 17402, parcel number listed below, as approved by the Pennsylvania State Veterans Commission. This is a new application, taxes for the 2019 year in the amount of $2,156.60. Second. Questions or comments? Yes. Uh, I'm just curious to know what choice we actually have in these matters. Are, are we certifying rather than agreeing to do this? <coughs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's already been recommended by the the commission that actually does the review about whether the person is eligible. It's so a, it, a stamp. Is it even possible for a board to reject these things? I can't imagine because I believe it's an entitlement. Yeah. Once they okay. So it's just a process issue yours. to me that we have a few things that show up on these agendas from time to time for which votes are required but they have no effect. Is this one of those? Presumably, yes. I mean, I, if you didn't approve it, they would probably challenge you yeah. and find a way around it. No, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just. 
curious to know why it's not just granted. It doesn't seem that, that we really have a role in this other than to acknowledge it. Thank you. I guess this can also be a unanimous roll call vote. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Item F, the administration recommends board approval of the additional bus van drivers for 219 as shown on the agenda. So moved. Second. Questions, comments? <coughs> unanimous roll call vote. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. Informational section, um, you have before you the Food Service Department uh, report, the monthly dining review report, and the sales report. Any questions? That Thank concludes you. my report. And Dr. Ellis filled in from Ms. Geyer. Yeah. I, I need to do my agenda. Right. Okay. Okay. So doc, Dr. Ellis filled in from Ms. Geyer, so now we'll let. And Ms. Geyer was given dispensation to, to oh, not. Okay. Yeah. Told her not to come if she didn't feel like she should drive in this. So she would have come if we asked her to, but I think it was more appropriate to just say, stay home tonight. Ms. Schrader. Yes, uh, it's my understanding this is to be item five. Uh, number H. Uh, I move to approve the settlement of the tax assessment appeal litigation. Uh, the case number is listed here for the record for tax parcel, also a long number that is uh, located at 1499 East Philadelphia Street, Spring Garden Township, York County, Pennsylvania, owned by Warden Allen Property LP for the following assessed values for the applicable tax year. 2014 through 2017, $3,428,400 uh, for those three tax years. 2017 to 2018, $3,400,000. <coughs> 18, 2019 tax year, $3,375,000, 2019 2020 tax year, $3,350,000, 2020-2021 tax year, $3,100,000, the 2019 2020 assessed value shall remain as set forth above until the 2022 2023 school district tax year, absent major construction, renovations, renovations that are currently being constructed but which have not yet been completed, demolition of improvements, or a countywide reassessment. District administration and solicitor are authorized to take all steps necessary to effectuate this settlement and to resolve this pending tax assessment appeal case. Mr. President, you consider that a motion to add to the agenda as well to approve that motion. Okay, thank you. And you would need to seek public comment as well. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. We have public comment. <coughs> we have a roll call vote, please, on this. Mr. Posner? Yes. Yes. Mr. Sanders? Yes. Mrs. Byrick? Yes. Mrs. Schrader? Yes. Mr. Scalette? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Mrs. Hillman? Yes. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, academic standards? Uh, yes, academic standards and curriculum committee recommends the approval of the administration's new and modified high school courses uh, proposal. So moved. Second. Discussion, questions and comments? This can be a unanimous roll call vote. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. And the Academic Standards and Curriculum Committee uh, recommends approval of the administration's 
class rank proposal. Again, that's a motion out of committee. Second. Motion? Yeah. I will not be supporting this motion. Yeah, I, I would just like to say that I, I appreciate all the work and effort that Dr. Ellis has put into to, um, presenting and answering our questions along the way. And, um, I'm trying to have an open mind with this, but I also will not be supporting this change because I just do not believe as an academic institution that we should um, downplay I would say on the flip side that uh, when this was first proposed several months ago, I think I probably felt the same reaction down deep, and it was probably 55 years in the making before I was able to express it. I think what we're seeing is that, that instead of downplaying academics, it actually upplays academics. It does it in a different fashion. It reframes academic performance in a fashion which I think was pretty aptly stated tonight when you talk about recognizing students that have a 4.0 or higher as the cutoff as opposed to the number 10, which would be sort of a fluctuating number. Could, it could reach down as far as a 3.5 in a bad year. I mean, it's an, an extreme example. Um, the other piece of the puzzle is how we help or hinder our students when they apply to upper-end universities and colleges around the country. And I think the work that Dr. Ellis did on, on that aspect of the research is also very much worth considering. That, um, it took time for me to digest it, and I, for that reason, I, I would support this proposition. Uh, I, I also appreciate the research that uh, went into this proposal. Um, uh, I learned a lot by, by sorting through uh, the debate. Uh, I see uh, class rank as a means where the end is academic rigor and excellence. Um, so uh, um, in that respect, uh, I'm happy to support this proposal um, and affirm the, the end, which is a, a doubled effort to ensure that Suburban maintains uh, its, its rigor and excellence uh, for future generations of students. And um, I don't see... Um, a change in this class rank policy as a, uh, a detriment to that end. Yeah, I think I would like to add that I started out skeptically about this, but I think the effort that Dr. Ellis and the administration has done to demonstrate where they want to go and how they'll get there has made me a believer as well. So, thank you. I just, oh boy. <laughs> um, jump on uh, in here and say that um, it, it seems to me this is, uh, has become antiquated. Uh, that's uh, sort of convinced uh, me in terms of other top school districts uh, across the state. Um, the vast majority uh, do not um, still do class rank. Uh, I do like the fact that we're still acknowledging and recognizing um, those um, students who excel because that is, as an academic institution, what is most important to me uh, is, is um, when those students who work hard and, and are successful receive some recognition. Uh, it's the, uh, I'll call it the rat race, the um, continually trying to uh, compete against each other uh, through the course of four years that, um, that worried me. And I, I'm glad to see that it's a, a, something that we can phase out, but still continue to recognize those uh, students who have worked hard and uh, achieved academically. I have one question to ask. Uh, it was from the comment uh, earlier about the possibility that the, the, the named valedictorian might not be the actual uh, number one rank. So I wonder if someone could address that um, so I could understand that situation better. Historically, uh, we have always done all graduation honors based upon the end of the third marking period, simply because it was not practical to end final exams two days prior to graduation and be able to do all the grading necessary to properly identify where every student fell, whether they made the distinguished honors level or the honors level, 
or in the case of the valedictorian salutatorian, because historically they are identified as speaking at graduation, as well as receiving recognitions and plaques and so forth. So logistically, it was not possible to, to make that recognition. Um, now, with just two students under consideration for valedictorian and salutatorian, what Mrs. Label and Sharp suggested would certainly be practical. Their names wouldn't necessarily be printed in the program. They wouldn't necessarily be, we might have to consider how we choose the students for graduation speakers, but we could recognize them differently because of that, because we're only trying to get <coughs> two students graded in a short period of time as opposed to 250 or whatever that graduating class might be. We make this a roll call vote, please. Mr. Coleman? No. Mrs. Schrader? Yes. 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 Mr. Scalet? Yes. Mrs. Freiburg? No. Mr. Sanders? No. Mr. Sullivan? Yes. Mr. Robinson? Yes. Passes. Thank you. Mr. Toman. The uh, <coughs> nominations committee report the meetings on December 2nd. Mr. Robinson. Thank you, Mr. President. You have before you the personnel report, which includes retirement, resignation, employment, extracurricular, and volunteers. Were any board member like any of these items considered separately, or are there any questions on any of these items? If not, the chair moves approval of the below mentioned items. Second. Second. Thank you very much. Questions, comments? This can be a unanimous roll call vote. This will be considered a unanimous roll call vote okay. unless I hear votes to the contrary. Hearing none, motion passes. So just to, to reiterate that 62 years in education that's, that we're losing and uh, just <coughs> to extend our thanks to uh, Mrs. Cardello and Mrs. Stanford for their um, service to the community and uh, to the students of uh, Pennsylvania. 62 years is that's big shoes to fill, so thank you. That concludes my report. How about your next one? How about my next one? I am happy to report that Dr. Williams and I conferred with the new PSBA district rep, Mr. Lynn Kohler of West York, had a long, illuminating, frank, and serious discussion, one of the highlights of which is that Mr. Kohler will be meeting with Representative Stan Saylor tomorrow and will query him on the re reactions of a legislator to a district such as ours returning grant money rather than grabbing it with both hands. I'm sure we are all look forward to his reply with breathless anticipation. I know I am. And I'm pretty sure he's going to remember because I've been bugging, about, bugging him about it all week. So more to follow. That concludes my report. Thank you. Ms. Fowry. Uh, the Lincoln Intermediate uh, report, um, on Clues report, I was speaking with um, Sue Keaston, who is from Dallas now, who represents us, that the operating budget this year for the LIU is somewhere a, a little over $371,000. That's only the operating budget um, for the 25 districts in the LIU 12. Uh, and York Suburban's uh, contribution this year will be a reduction of $6,800 from last year. So we'll pay approximately fifteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Um, it's always nice to know if something has gone down instead of going up. You know, uh, uh, for the joint operating authority, uh, we had to uh, agree to make certain repairs in the refrigerator there in the kitchen at the learning center. We also did our reorganization meeting. Um, I had the privilege of being asked to serve as the president of the JOA um, along with. Um, Stephanie Shirchino, who will be the vice president. That concludes that report. We're going to York Adams Academy. Um, as I reported last month, we had three graduates um, out of the 37 who were eligible to graduate. We had probably one of the largest crowds, and we can't figure out why, because we only have 27 or 28 students <coughs> in attendance, but one of the largest uh, crowds we've ever had. Uh, and Alexis Miller, who is one of the 
three suburban graduates also receive one of the faculty scholarships, which the faculty contributes money to a fund, and then two scholarships are awarded at each commencement, the winter and the spring, to help these children go on to further their education. So that concludes my report. You also have the, one of the first copies of the board brief report. We hope to get it to you monthly so that you know some of the topics that we're discussing at York Adams. <coughs> Do we have a York Adams Tax Bureau report? Okay, thank you. York County School of Technology. I have no report since we don't meet in December. So. Okay, you have a link here to the activities report and also the board meeting schedule and upcoming events. Uh, thank you everyone that sat through it with us tonight and this is your last opportunity for public comment. Nobody's Sorry. We should recognize our uh, representative from last year, Ms. Geyer, was named to the All-State uh, Volleyball Tournament. So just okay. hats off to her. So noted. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you.